Thanks for dropping in. In last week's video, my collection of 3D printed twist lock boxes grew yet again. It now has several hat box designs with ribbons and festive toppers. These locking containers are an excellent way to give presents. But what if your gift is an oddball shape or too large for any of the existing designs? Well, that's not a problem. In this week's video, I'll demonstrate how you can customize the twist lock box to fit a specific gift. For this, we're going to use Fusion 360. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the program or 3D modeling in general. This tutorial isn't going to get into anything too complex. But before we model anything, we need to figure out how large to make the container. I'm going to create a box to hold this, my original Nintendo Game Boy. Yep, this is the original brick design from 1989. This hefty handheld measures a little under 90 by 150 by 35 millimeters. Now that we have our key measurements, let's jump to the computer. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360. The first step is to open our template model. This file is in step format, a popular file type for sharing models between CAD programs. They aren't as common as STLs, but they are far easier to manipulate. So I try to include them in my designs whenever relevant, or whenever I'm reminded. On the left is a bodies menu that we can expand to see all the individual pieces of our template box. Unfortunately, the export process renamed the parts body one, body two, and so on. That's not ideal, but if you click on a name, the associated part will be highlighted. So it's not all that tricky to figure out what's what. If you want, you can go in and rename all these to specific names, but this project's so simple, I'm not gonna bother. Let's focus on the base of the box first. You can hide the other elements by clicking the eye icons next to them, or you can select them and press V on your keyboard. Since we're already at the sidebar, right click on the document settings icon and click capture timeline history. This will give us a running list of all the actions we take while modifying this design. If an action is captured in the timeline, that step can be altered later without undoing any of the work that followed it. The internal dimensions for the default box is 180 by 180 by 36 millimeters. That last measurement is from the floor of the box to the bottom of this latch hole. Everything above that will be taken up by the lid. That overall volume also doesn't include the extra space available in the corners or factor in the little chamfer around the bottom. Consider this volume an estimate. To fit the Game Boy, we want to shrink the box by 90 millimeters along the left right axis and 30 millimeters along the front back axis. The Game Boy could fit with the box's current depth, but I'm going to add an extra five millimeters to that anyway. This process will rely entirely on the move tool located under the modify menu. We're going to use this a lot, so it's worth remembering the keyboard shortcut, M. With the move tool open, specify that we only want to move faces, not bodies, not components, or other objects. We also want to select translate as the movement type, this will constrain movement to simple cardinal directions. Now we'll specify what surface we want to move. Let's select the floor of the container and try moving it down. Well, that's not good. As you can see, the floor of the box has clipped right through a bunch of other geometry and made a complete mess. We need to select both the floor and all associated faces. So let's cancel that selection and try again. The easiest way to select all the faces we want is to move the camera to the side of the model. Now use your mouse to draw a large selection box, which starts to the left of the base and slices it in half, like this. This will select every single face that's fully contained by the rectangle we drew. This is regardless of whether the face was visible or hidden around a corner. If we had drawn the exact same rectangle starting at the bottom right corner, the number of faces selected would have been higher. It would include any face that the rectangle touches, not just the faces that were fully contained. Knowing when to use these quick selection techniques can save you tons of time that would otherwise be spent selecting dozens of elements individually. Now that the faces we want are selected, we can move everything down five millimeters. 
Make sure that looks good and hit OK. Now let's do the same thing to the sides of the box. We want to bring those in 90 millimeters total. That's 45 millimeters per side. And we'll also bring the front and the back end 15 millimeters each for a total reduction of 30 millimeters. Okay, the base is done. Now we can start printing that while we work on the remaining parts. Using the exact same selection technique, we can actually resize multiple parts at once. So let's unhide the two latches, both lid ribbons, the lid itself, and the spring. Now we just do the same steps as before, making sure that we match the earlier measurements. This is looking good, but check out the spring. There's a minimum valid width for this to work. If the box you're aiming for is much smaller than this, consider using the step template files I've included with smaller Twistlock present projects. The last part left is the ribbon that clips onto the base. It needs to be five millimeters taller. So let's hide the base, show that ribbon, and resize that as well. Now it's time to print and assemble it. And here's the assembled box, completed with a Game Boy. It only really took learning one major Fusion 360 tool. You could take this much further and make some truly awesome custom boxes. So if you try this out, have fun with it. Oh, and let me know how it turned out. Until then, happy printing, and thanks for stopping by. Oh hey, you're one of the people who knows to stick around to the end of the video for bonus content. And this week, I have an extra design to share. The giant fidget snowman has been updated. It has button eyes and button buttons. If you used magnets to install the original buttons, these can just be swapped right in. While I don't plan to have any more snow people accessories this year, it is something I hope to revisit in the future. So let me know if you have any ideas for snow people accessories.